Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to present to you a video of how I made this little vignette box using Ideology products. Now some of the things I did do off camera but I'll talk you through them. Um, I used the um, baseboards and I used the adornments for Halloween. Off we go! get started so here I've got a roll of medical gauze and I've got these little vignette boxes these are square ones and I'll be using the smallest one and I'm just taking this gauze and you could use any kind of gauze I'm using it for a couple of different reasons uh, one of them being that um, it's gonna help the cement hold and secondly it's gonna give me a spooky after effect so I'm here trying to split this apart and I'm just gonna be using some PVA glue and I'm gonna glue it in to the inside of the box because we are going to be cementing down the inside of the box. And there'll be some parts here today that I will play you some music while I mundanely glue. <laughs> so I'll let you know when that's up and coming. I'm just spreading the glue with a brush all through the box, the inside of the box, getting it nice and wet. This glue, it doesn't dry super fast, so that's why I kind of like to use it for this so I can move my stuff around. And then I'll go ahead and just get this glued in. And I'm just pressing down and I can see here that I'm still doubled up, so I'm trying to spread this apart even more just for economy's sake. <laughs> and it's okay if it rips apart, you want that look. I definitely want the, the look, so and I'll be trimming a lot of this off afterwards. So I'm gonna add some more glue on top, and then I'm just gonna be using my brush and my fingers and whatever tools I can find to just kinda of get, get that all tucked up into the corners of the box. So for now, I'll play you some music while I continue to do that. Okay, I've got that all glued down. Now I'm gonna be using this. This is a grave texture paste. You can use the regular because this is from last year and I just wanted to use it up because it, you can see that these will dry out if you don't use them. You wanna use your stuff. I didn't use it much last year, but I don't know why because it's a nice neutral color. And all I'm doing here is filling in um, kind of doing maybe I might call it a base coat or a primer coat um, before I put the grit paste on. So I just kind of spread it around with my knife and then I'll start spreading it with my fingers. But let's go ahead and listen to some spooky music while I continue. Bye. 
that's done and I've let it dry, I'm going to go in with my grit paste. Now this is the Crypt grit paste and you can see it's also gotten old. So I'm going to take everything out of the jar. I'll use it all. I've got a fresh brand new jar, the bigger one, but this is from last year so I thought I'd go ahead and use it for here. Okay, I've got that all patted down and we'll let that dry. Meanwhile, I've got this ideology paper and I'm going to make some wood planks here because I wanna cover the sides with the wood planks. So I'll kind of make one on camera and then I'll make the rest off camera because you know, you've seen one, you've seen them all. And I was thinking I could do them in my sidekick. That's why my plates are out there, but they're a little bit long for the sidekick and it was just easier to run them through my um, vagabond. So I'm just poking out. I've, you see I've got the base layer, layer on the bottom and then I'm poking out layer two so all of the dies are labeled. And I'm going to glue that down. And I'll tell you on the next ones I got smart and I put some double-sided sticky tape onto them because putting the glue on some of those little places is yeah not, not, not as easy as you'd like it to be. Kind of oozes out. And when you put the double-sided sticky tape you just stick them on. And I'm over here trying to get all those little teeny tiny pieces out. In hindsight, probably shouldn't have used my um, precision plate because it really pushed that um, paper up into that die. So I'm just using my little reptile glue right here and just making sure I get all of the you know little loose pieces glued down. And I'm only doing the three layers today. I'm not gonna do the fourth layer. I don't need that much detail. It's on the sides and top and bottom. So I just don't need the extra detail or the extra bulk um, because I'll be gluing finial, you know, the top and bottom finials onto it. So I'm just taking some sandpaper and kind of sanding that and making it look old. And then I'll do the third layer on there these ones are coming out fairly easy because they're bigger pieces. And boy, oh, howdy, I'm saving those little pieces that came out because they're cool looking all by themselves. They'll find a home somewhere in a junk journal or something. So I'm just using my pokey tool here to poke out the little pieces because I don't want any of it to break and I don't want it to stretch too much because there's a super thin piece right there. So I'll go ahead and glue that one down the same thing, I'm nervous about that one skinny little piece right there. Because <laughs> uh, it, you know, kind of bent when it came out. But it's it's all good. I'll get it down. These, I'm, I'm, I have to say that these wood planks are slightly challenging. <laughs> Especially when it comes down to the last layer with the tiny little bits. I am so pleased at the Halloween release and the new release, Chapter 3 release from Tim Holtz and, and Sizzix. Um, especially the colorized because they really come together super, super easy. I so appreciate that because I avoid colorized dyes, honestly, because they're just too hard. <laughs> I mean, for me, anyway, I just don't have the really necessarily the patience for them. I know some people do them all day long. And I'm like, okay, come on, where's the next piece? And I lose pieces. And yeah, that's the nature of me. <laughs> So I'll sand that down too, and then I'll cut the rest off camera. All right, so I've got them all cut. Now I want to kind of darken them, so I'm going to use some of my Black Soot Distress ink. And I'm just going to use my flat foam pad, and I'm just going to kind of darken them. And they're going to get even darker, trust me on that. 
You could use regular white paper and color it or other colored paper. This is just what I used anyway. So I'm just gonna kind of wipe up that excess ink because you know me, I'll get it all over and then I'm gonna bring my box back in and see it's all nice and dry with my grit paste. And I'm gonna trim off most of this gauze, not all of it. Don't need to trim it all because some of it I'm gonna leave hang down. It's gonna be part of our spookiness. And off camera, what you don't see is I went inside and I took a black soot distress crayon and a walnut or a, a vintage photo distress crayon and I just made marks everywhere. You can see where, no, that's just a piece of paper. I just made marks everywhere and then sprayed it with water and moved it around to darken it, make it, made it look like, I don't know, mossy disgustingness. Now I'm gonna leave all this long hangy part, I like that. And then I used uh, my Distress Sprays Black Suit and I think, oh gosh, smoke, hickory smoke to um, color the gauze. And what you see me doing here is just sanding this down because I'm gonna be sticking paper to it. So I want to make sure that all those little pieces are inside and I've got a nice smooth surface to work with. And I couldn't tell you the grit of this sandpaper. That's not my genre. <laughs> it's a piece of sandpaper. Mike, give me some sandpaper. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm kind of fitting this. And I know that it's four inches. But I'm still going to make a mark. And you see I've got the uh, double-sided sticky tape on that piece of board. I'm just going to make the mark. And then I'm going to grab one of my little cutting mats. This is just a dollar store cutting mat. I don't even know if they have them anymore. Some do, some don't. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna take the metal side of my Tim Holtz ruler to use it as a guide. And I'm just using my little Fisker's finger blade to slice that piece off and just checking it for fit. I don't need it to be 100% perfect. And then I know that I need to trim some off the back. And it turns out to be a scant inch, a little bit over. Um, my husband calls it heavy, an inch heavy see <laughs> so yeah he's he does that kind of stuff so it's an inch heavy it's not an inch and an eighth and it's not an inch and a sixteenth it's just an inch heavy so eyeball it <laughs> you can trim it down later and you could probably cut this with scissors but it's pretty thick with the three layers and the sticky tape so I'm just cutting it with my knife and I will do this one on camera. I'll do the rest off camera. I am edging it with the black soot, of course. And then I'm just gonna stick that down to the top. And in this case, with the double-sided sticky tape. There we go, super easy. Look at there, we have wood on wood. <laughs> So we have to do all four of the other sides, so I'll do those all off camera. Okay, I've got them all on, and I have also um, darkened them down a little bit on the edges with my black soot ink. And now I'm going into this Halloween Ideology paper pad, because I want to cover the back. Even though you're not really going to see the back, I still want to cover it. Yep, I kind of like that one. I'm going to use that one for both the back and for the front panel. So I'm just going to kind of draw a line around my box with my pencil and trim the paper. Oh, I like this other side too. These papers are gorgeous. I love them all. It's very hard to choose and it's even harder to make yourself cut the paper, but please cut the paper. That's why you bought it. <laughs> Not just to look at, but yeah, I like the way that looks on the back. It's just kind of scratchy and dungeony feeling rotten wood, I don't know. <laughs> and for this, I'm gonna use my Distress Collage Medium and a brush. And I'm just gonna brush that pretty heavy on here, but evenly. The stuff dries pretty quick. But this is gonna ensure that my paper sticks to it and it's, you know, dries nice and matte. I'm just gonna make sure my paper's on there evenly and just give it a press, turn it over and give it a press. And then I'm gonna still be using my collage medium, so I'm gonna cover it up with a little piece of, um, what do you call it, sticky stuff? Um, press and seal, yeah, there we go. And I'm just putting a little pressure on this just to make sure it gets on there nice and flat. And then 
I'll kind of rub around on it and any edges that might be sticking over, I'll just kind of push them in and rub on them. Because um, for me anyway, I'm never going to get a perfect cut. That's just not in my vocabulary here. And I'm pulling out my black soot crayon, distress crayon. And I'm going to distress these edges here so that they're, first of all, there's no white core showing through. And second of all, everything kind of blends together. Super easy to do. I recommend using your finger tool. If you want to use a glove, go for it. And see, I'm getting in these corners too. So that's just going to kind of mask the, um, the parts that were glued together and just give it a whole dirty look. That's what we want. We want a little bit of dirty look there. I'm just spreading a little here and there. Even though, again, you really aren't going to see the back and the lights are going to be attached back there too. Yes, we are doing lights. And the part that you don't see me doing is um, also drilling a hole for my light. So I'm measuring this and yeah, there's my head, thank you. It's mm, light a quarter inch. <laughs> So it doesn't really have a measurement that I can tell because we added that thickness of the paper. So you see I the paper width there is six inches. So I moved it down to just a little under five and three quarters and that seems to fit. So then I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim that down so it's on the line again so I can kind of eyeball the measurement. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit off because, you know, we're going to be doing stuff to it. <laughs> And I, I even like those little trim pieces. Okay, there's one more, and let's get one more. All right, we've got our pieces here. Let's move those to the side, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use the collage medium to put these down. And I'm just kind of bending that over, and then I'll cut it with my scissors. That's the easy way. I could measure it, but I, I can't be asked. You know. We're busy here. We have other things to do. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be precise. If it was needed to be precise, I'd show you how to make it precise. I'm just going to lay that piece on there and then go all the way around and do it all the way around. Just to kind of blend together the paper pieces of wood we put on there and the actual wood give it a sort of a seal and I'm going in just a little bit heavy with my um, collage medium because I want to make sure everything's stuck down and I'm going to be actually going over the entire thing except for the back with the collage medium as well um, because I want to I'm going to be using some water and that's part I did off camera but I'm going to be using some water to um, both move my crayon around on the inside of that grit paste and um, I'll be using some sprays to spray the um, gauze because I don't want it to be white. I want it to be dirty and old. And we'll get our last piece down and I'm just kind of poking with my thumbnail there where I need to cut it. And if you get it too long you can trim it. It's no big deal. See, it's a little bit long there. So I'm just going to take my scissors and give it a little, little haircut. There we go. Now I'm just going to take my collage medium and I'm going to cover all of the sides. And goopy, I don't care. It shrinks, it dries matte, and it's going to make sure everything stays down and kind of blends together. And then it's also going to, again, protect my um, my distress crayon there that's the black. And I don't mind if it moves it around a little either. The older the wood, the better. All right, we just have to set that aside and let it dry. And then we're going to work on our finials. So the finials I painted with the black soot um, distress paint. And off camera, I after they dried, I dry brushed them with the statue um, 
oh gosh, I can't think of the name of that stuff. Um, foundry wax. Um, but I didn't film it. But that gave it a cool metallic look. So once they were dry, I did that. And I'll go ahead and wash my hands. And here, there's my little Ranger holder things. And there's my foundry wax. But uh, apparently I turned off the video when I was doing it. Yeah, here I think that my video's off, but it's actually on. We all do that sometimes, so that's why we're sitting here. Let's <laughs> use those little hand tools to hold that while I'm heating it. And right now I'm just holding it to heat it to kind of make sure the paint's dry. Anyway, we'll be moving on to the next step and you'll see those finials later. All right, we're back to this and see there's my crayon and boom, there we are. I've done the inside and I've gotten this gauze wet and brown and black and disgusting. <laughs> That's what we want, right? And I'm just kind of visualizing how that's going to sit on there. And I haven't decided yet. I think I might just let it hang. So I drilled a hole um, where I want my ideology piece to kind of hide the lights. And so I've got the hole and I'm going to, and I just used a little, I've got a little portable Dremel. It's like battery operated or it's a rechargeable it's not a dremel by any means it's you know an off brand but it has a little boring tool and there you can see the little finials with the uh metallic so i'm just pulling the lights through and i'm going to test them and make sure they are still working yep they're still working and then i'm just going to hot glue this little piece onto the back you could cover it with something, make a little box to go around it or something, but I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not, I'm not real worried about it. And so what I did here was I took that ideology piece and I took a couple of pieces, and I'm just gonna put some hot glue in there to kind of hold that in place. I took a couple of pieces of chipboard and put them together so they could serve as like an inner frame so that, that sits up and I can backlight the picture. So I'm just wrapping the tiny lights around it. And these, by the way, are tiny lights from their Scrappy Shack brand. And I don't notice any difference at all. Okay, so I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go ahead and pull it down a little bit more because I'm, you know, we I want all the wires hidden. And then I'm just going to throw some hot glue in here to kind of hold them in place. Try not to burn myself. Try not to get too many hot glues stringy doos, although they look like webs, so we could probably just get away with them. And then I'm going to glue that down to the back. Make sure that my lights are where I want them to be before I glue it down. And I'm just using the hot glue to glue it down. Tucking that one in because it wants to be stubborn. Okay, we've got our backlight. Now, I have drilled some holes in uh, the little skeleton's eye, and I'm going to poke one light through one eye. And my hole's not big enough, so you're about to see my little pretend Dremel tool. I call it pretend because, yeah, I mean, I have a Dremel, but I don't have any room in my craft room for it. So this little USB rechargeable one works just fine, and I'll just go ahead and bore those holes out a little bit bigger. This is very thick chipboard, by the way, and I did edge the chipboard with the black soot ink as well. Okay, my holes are good, so I'm just gonna take my little black alcohol marker and just kind of dig it into the hole so that they are black again. And I'm gonna push my lights in the way I want them. And just kind of curve them over a little. And then do the scary thing, which is take my scissors and cut that wire because I don't need the other lights. And then I'm just going to kind of move all these wires so that none of them are sticking out. Throw a little hot glue on to make sure that nothing comes off. And burn my thumb. And he's going to sit up there. Let me tuck that wire back in there and he's going to kind of overlap the picture. So I've got a couple of pieces of um, wood blocks. 
They are, I don't know where I got them. I probably got them at the dollar store in the craft section. And I'm just going to place them, just one, right there so that he stands up over the, um, the little picture or tin sign. It reminds me of a tin sign. I'm just going to hot glue it down. So easy. And then I'm going to take my red alcohol marker and I want those eyes to be red. So I'm just going to color the lights with the red alcohol marker. Super easy. All right, he's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, I think I'm going to just let that hang down. I kind of like it. I don't know. I don't know. I've decided. <laughs> That's how you make. You just figure it out. So I have this little bat from the um, Halloween adornment set from Ideology. All these things came from Scrappy Shack, by the way. Compliments of the owner. Um, really great little place to shop. Um, everything's always discounted and her shipping's really, really quick. And the customer service is amazing. So now I just need to put the little finials on. And I'm just going to use hot glue. And uh, trust me on this, I'm eyeballing this to find the center. Um, yeah, I never was famous for my math skills. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but then I'm going to put the top finial on. And we're almost done. Get any excess glue off of there. And there we go. The wonderful thing about hot glue is how quickly it dries. And I'm just going to get any excess off of here. Yep, I can see a little bit hanging over. There's our lights. I know they're still working. Get that little extra hot glue off the back. And she's ready to roll. So I'm going to turn off some lights so you can see what it looks like in the dark. More lights. Pretty cool, eh? My little spooky guy. I hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And also, um, if you're interested in shopping, I encourage you to go over and visit Scrappy Shack for a really good time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.